Hey coders, welcome back to another project right here. I've been working on this project for a while and I finally got it working. It involves the Raspberry Pi 5, the web camera module 2 right here, and is using AI with the Olama app that uses large language models. I loaded Lava on here. Lava is a vision model for AI and it will translate any image that you capture that you send to it and it'll tell you what's in the photo. <laughs> So what I did was I created an app using Next.js and I have it ported over to the Raspberry Pi 5. If you watch my videos, you'll see that I program a lot in Next.js. So I really just ported over here to Raspberry Pi 5. I'm running Pi OS on this and I'm going to show you an example right now. Uh, and then I will also disconnect this, put it on my portable battery because I want to make this portable. So I am disconnected from the internet right now and everything. So I'm going to run this right now, show you how it captured the image. I will port this out onto my portable battery, walk around with it, do another photo test. And then if you stay till the end, I'll show you how I set all this up with everything. But let's get into this little photo test right now. The photo shows that this is a an open contact twist case with a CD sticking out of it. The background is non descript and there's a blurred image of a hand holding up another similar CD case. So as you notice right there, the audio on the Raspberry Pi 5 isn't that great. I am using a speech dispatch that I installed on that. But let me show you how it runs on my MacBook here. The same app. And I, the MacBook is just, you know, it just sounds a little bit better using the web audio. Even though if you watch my previous projects, I use AI voices that sounds way better. But for this example, I am using the web audio. So let me snap a photo here and show you. A person taking a selfie with a camera, distorted by a fishy lens effect. <laughs> distorted by a fishy lens effect. So yeah, it, it does process it a lot faster on the MacBook. Of course, this is an M2 chip on this, but on the Raspberry Pi 5, it does take a little bit longer on here, but it does work. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to disconnect this, put on my portable battery right here, and I'm going to walk around outside and show you how it runs because, yeah, this thing is all locally on the machine. There's no internet connected. Okay, so I want to show you that it is working. I'm outside. Look, it sees the camera lens here. This is definitely portable, but it's it's too big. <laughs> it's freaking hilarious. You can definitely do this outside without needing to be on the internet right out here. out of focus image with purple sky. The colors are bright and it looks like the photo may have been taken during sunset. Uh, my camera actually just broke right now. <laughs> I don't know what happened with it. It's not responding right now. But uh, this is a cheaper little camera. This is the module two. And then also the screen, I couldn't get the touch screen to work. I ran the calibration and everything and it just doesn't touch. So um, I don't know. <laughs> But the, the monitor, I did get it to work, and I'll show you everything. I'm going to go back inside, set, the, set this back up, and then I'll show you how I set everything up, all the coding, how to install things. And yeah, this was just a fun little project. Alright, so I'm back inside, and uh, I want to show you how I got everything to work here. I'm going to run over the specs and 
this whole uh, system right here. I have the Raspberry Pi 5, 16 gigabytes. And this is a mini case provided by SunFounder. It is called the Pyroman 5 Max. I have some build series on this. I have the original case over here too, the silver one, clear. Looks so nice. Watch the build on that. And then I also did a build on the um, Pyroman 5 Max. The Max is the black one here. And the, the new Max one has dual NVMe drives. So uh, of course you can buy small little enclosures to run this better portably if you want to walk around the outside, but it also worked fine with what I had here. I didn't want to buy a whole thing just to do this project. And uh, I powered this up with a portable battery, it ran fine. And then this monitor right here, it is a MHS 3.5 inch display. And uh, this is not the official, this is a third party one. It took me a couple of tries that I'm going to show you right now how I got this monitor to work because this was the biggest pain in my butt. And uh, this thing, I, I tried to run the installation with their uh, manual that they had and it did not work. So if you install Ubuntu onto your Raspberry Pi 5, this monitor will work. But on the Raspberry Pi uh, operating system, this monitor didn't work and it took me so many tries. But let me show you the commands on this. Um, I don't think I have any other upgrades on this. Uh, I just have a you know keyboard that I connect to run the commands. I have a wireless mouse here that I connect to that. I have a, uh, a speaker so I can connect for the audio. And uh, I also have my app provided on my Patreon. If you want to go download it, it will support this channel if you download the app. My app is written in Next.js, so if you're into programming using Next.js, you can go download that. It's in my Patreon, and I do that with all of my projects. And so, yeah, let me uh, show you the command on how to get this monitor to work, because I feel like some of you are trying to get third-party monitors to work, and maybe this will help you to do that. So let me show you that command right now. So you don't have to plug the uh, display in right now, but you can if you want to. You just plug it in. Okay, so you want to open up Terminal. And you want to run sudo nano slash boot slash firmware slash config dot txt and then scroll down and you want to comment out the uh, overlay right here it's called dt overlay right here dt overlay equals vc4 dash kms dash v3d go comment that one out and then scroll all the way down or actually you don't have to even put it at the bottom here you can put it right next to the other one but you want to have this command right here. You want to have dt overlay equals pi screen comma speed equals and uh, I gave it 40 million so 40 000 000 000. and so this gives it a very fast refresh rate. That's what I noticed. I had this at 18 million too and it's just uh, it was okay. And then after that comma drm comma FPS equals 30. So this is also frame rate. I think you can remove this, but I just put it in anyways. And then comma rotate equals 90. And I had this rotate 90 so that I can have it uh, portrait. But if you leave out this rotate, we'll have it in landscape mode. And uh, these other commands up here I added for my Pyroman 5 here. So this is just so that it recognizes my NVMe as a Gen 3 and uh, other stuff like that. But yeah, uh, it's just these two lines. Now you want to press Control X, press Y to save, and then enter to get out of it. After you do that, you still got to run sudo rasp-config. And then you want to go down to interface options, and you want to enable this SBI right here. You see, would you like to enable SBI? Yes. SBI enabled, okay. And then go down to advanced options, and then you want to change this A7 right here that says Wayland. Press on it and change it to W1 which is X11. You want it to boot up using the X11 like that, okay? And press OK. And yeah, and then press Tab, go to Finish, and then you don't need to reboot right now, press No, and then shut it down and plug in your 3.5 display. And then after it shuts down, uh, unplug the HDMI on the monitor, boot up your Raspberry Pi 5, and then this monitor should turn on. And then there's some calibration too, so I'll leave the rest of the code inside of the description if you want to see calibration. And then, you know, like for my app, I installed a lot of things to get my app to like talk and all that. And uh, I'll leave the commands down in the description if you want to see my audio on how I set that up. And uh, I'll leave other commands too if you want to see how I ran everything. But yeah, I am running the Raspberry Pi 5 operating system on this. 
And then you want to open up your browser here and you want to go to pi-apps.io and you want to install that. So click on install because this is where we're going to install Olama for our large language model. And you can just select any model that you want. But you have to select this wget right here. Copy that, go back into terminal, paste it, and then run that command. It will install pi-apps. So inside of pi-apps, scroll down to tools down here. And then scroll down and you'll see Olama GUI right here. Olama, install that thing. But when you install Olama on uh, Raspberry Pi 5 here, it's always running in the background. That's how I'm able to use my app and call all of these functions here. I can call all of the models with this address that it has right here. It's using localhost with the port number 11434. So yeah, this was a fun project to work on even though it took a while to do but uh, leave some comments down below if you're working on something similar or if you're having any issues and um, I'll try to help out as best as I can go ahead and check out my other videos on the Pyroman 5 here very cool case camera module right there this is my actual app that I wrote using Next.js and like I said go support my channel by downloading that in the Patreon and it'll really help this out give it a like subscribe and I will see you later. Bye.